Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for checking us out here at Game On, where we just keep on gaming on. I'm Lucky, and today, starting our Let's Play of Dragon's Dogma 2. Dragon's Dogma originally came out in 2012, then they had the Arisen DLC that came out in 2014, which added Bitter Black Isle. Now here in 2024, March 22nd, we have Dragon's Dogma 2. Another Capcom <coughs> developed and published game. Looking forward to it. Super, super excited. Haven't been this excited for a game since probably Elden Ring came out, guys. Um, we're doing our first live playthrough, too. So we'll chop this up into the first couple Let's Play episodes, but we're going to try to do a couple hours here and just see what this game's all about. We're really excited for the story, which I wasn't excited for in the original Dragon's Dogma because it wasn't that great of a story. This one looks like it has a much better story with more well-developed characters and a deeper plot line. Also, the graphics are obviously going to be upgraded. All the high fidelity is going to be upgraded. We've got a PlayStation 5 we're playing this on. <clears throat> and let's rock and roll and just try this out, guys. Let's see what's up. Oh, here we go. Guys, let me know how the volume is. Hopefully you get the brightness right. <clears throat> oh man. La corruption est ha hovet omone. Something, something, some Conviction is the human will that reaches the greatest limit or the greatest power. Beautiful. Looks beautiful, by the way. Look at this. Reminds me of Witcher 3. Right away. <laughs> On a guess, lend me your ears. Long as our favorite man suffered without a true monarch to guide her and her people. Decades have passed since last His Majesty Erland sat atop the Draken throne. Long have we endured, yet it has not been for none. At last, the bell has tolled on the age of the Consul. At last, we may celebrate the coming of our rightful ruler. The return of the Sovereign. <laughs> My word, such an inspiring visit. Your Majesty shall have my eternal yeah, fealty. No Your Majesty, of how long I have awaited this moment. This is different. Behold, before you sit the rightful inheritor of the Draken throne, chosen by the dragon as its enemy. Behold and rejoice. Fortune has delivered us our savior at last. At last! Praise be, for only the sovereign's guidance can lead us true. All hail the sovereign! All hail! Let all present pledge their allegiance to the sovereign. Let us be united in the hope that our legions reign when they are end. Long live the sovereign of Vermont! Long live the sovereign! Arisen, thou who wouldst slay the dragon, if thou seekest to behold this world in its true aspect, abandon thy reason, cast aside thy hearts and thy life both. I ask thee to demonstrate. 
Excavation site, jail. Take down a record of your name and face. Come on, step forward. So just a quick aside about that first scene. It was very beautiful. Obviously, we were in a world called Vermond. There's a Draken throne. Erland had passed away a long time ago and he was a king. And it looks like we were going to be the new king. The Arisen. But then the dragon's voice spoke to us, and now we're in prison here. So is this <clears throat> reality, or was the reality of us being the king? Hmm. I'm really not sure, but the scene was beautifully written, beautifully executed, voice acting was on point and on par. Uh, the music was great. Great. So let's continue. Now, this is going to be our character selection here. Oh, this is so interesting how they do this. Um, in the first game, they just lined them all up, they faced you, kind of like a photo shoot for uh, a mugshot, excuse me. This one, they're all different poses, and we're in a prison cell. Very, very smart, very well done. Good touch. I think that was the one I chose on my character creator model. I used one of the cat people as a bodyguard. it must be you. You've got a heart. I thought I recognized you. Why is... Not it's so, so mysterious, I want to pick it because I can't see its face. If the pawn I'm looking for doesn't come forward soon, there'll be trouble for the lot of you. Yeah? Speak up, you good-for-nothing pawn. Are you the one, then? There's no mistaking it. You're the one. I'm gonna pick this one just because I can't even see their face. Oh, this is the one that I created. Okay, there you go. This is how we pick our character created. Yeah, this is... This is it. The thief. Let's do this, guys. I ill like that look in your eyes. It is queerly brazen for a pawn. Okay, so dialogue doesn't go on by itself. Most of your kind have eyes weak as a cadaver's. Mayhap it is only natural seeing as how you rise from the dead. There's aught different about you, though. Could it be that you fear death just as we mortals do? Worry not, Vessel. Three days here, and you'll be longing for death's sweet embrace. Come along, you feckless dullards. <laughs> what are you doing? Jailed Awakening. Priority quest set automatically. View quests. Press the middle button to view our quests here. No, nope, that's map. Maybe that was it. Follow the overseer's command. You awaken from a pleasant dream of plaudits and revelry to find yourself in a jail cell with no memory of how you came to be there. Okay, and then we can select it, just like in the original one. Well, let's see. I think that makes it my main one now, right? Yeah. 
So, this is awesome, guys. Apparently, we're a pawn. Worthless, soulless. Ooh, very nice touch. You just go up, you don't have to interact with it, it opens by itself. I like the hold to talk instead of just tap it. Okay, I wanted to help you out, but can't really do anything else right now. So far, the graphics are amazing. Sound quality is really, really good. What about you? We're not allowed to talk during missions, sir. Ah, I'm a sir. Maybe a pawn, but we're still a sir. Can't run yet or anything. Turn your gaze elsewhere. I'll not be stared at. Yeah. Wonder what we're excavating. Oh, look at that. We're excavating something. The hole. Lovely. I love the camera angles. The lighting looks amazing, too. Hopefully that's coming out all right on stream. Get a move on. Okay, I'm coming. So what's the overseer taking us to do? Are we going to go use our pickaxe and start mining with these guys? Must be something like that. Oh. Look at that. So they have dialogue that appears without you activating any of it. Oh. Don't get all jank with me if I can't jump yet. Now, the original Dragon's Dogma did have some jank in it. There was a few things yet. Pray. Do not overexert yourself. It's Rook. Rook was in the first one. This is no place for one of your ilk. Tis harsh beyond measure. Even we pawns are pushed to the brink. You ought not anger the overseer. Let us proceed to the site. So the pawns are more than just your partners in this. It seems like they're almost slave-like. I mean, being made... Okay, now I can jog. Perfect. I do not understand how it is they can... You don't understand it. Okay. Which would be... You're doing, Rook. Come on. You're doing, Rook. Oh, we gotta stay with him. Okay. So awesome. Your stamina does not deplete. That was one of the major differences in this one from Dragon's Dogma. Was that you always had to, you to, get to stop work. it. You always had to stop and use stamina items as soon as your stamina ran out. So you're always entering the menu, using a bunch of items, exiting, enter the menu, using a bunch of items, exiting. Doesn't look like that's going to be an issue here. Okay, we're going to pick up the rock. Now we see on our mini map. Prepared to work. Then you all begin by carrying stones out from the station in the back and bringing them here. Mm. So we can see by our mini map on the bottom left right there. Oh nice. L1 plus this, this is what I was asking for. So our mini map will direct us very, very well. I like it a lot better than the first one. Also, you see how we just had a shortcut right there? That's sick. That's what I was asking for in the first one. Because also, if you were in a fight, you would have to, boom, stop. Wrong menus. I'll get used to this menu. Boom, stop, use your items, click, 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 exit back out, continue fighting, stop, use your items, click, 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 continue fighting, and then the fight would be over. It really interrupted this flow of gameplay, I felt like, and the same thing with the stamina items. Awesome, you can grapple on the ledges again, that's perfect. Man, look at that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the platforming aspect was one of the best aspects of this game. There's going to be so much stuff that we can just, like, pick up a crate and take to. Anyways, so far I'm loving it. Looks really good, guys. Looks like they got some really new stuff figured out here. Some good stuff, so no stamina drain. And quick item usage is sick. Okay, whatever you said. Carry the boulder back to Rook. Wow. So the, I mean, obviously, look at that. She is strong. Holy cow. And we can jump, too. I mean, there's no way a, a human could lift that rock. 
Okay, Rook, I got your rock. Take it. A job well done. Now the next step is to. Oh my god. Some got blown up. What is this commotion? Perhaps we ought to investigate. Like in every video game, we run towards danger instead of away from it. You heeded the overseer's command. Okay, we completed that quest. Oh, if we hold L3 and hold circle, we can dash, but I didn't do it right there in time. Let's try that out. Oh, this is gonna... Ooh. Ooh, it's a Medusa. Look at that. Petrification was gnarly in the first one, guys. No, the damn thing's been awoken. You've got to fell that fiend, even at the cost of your lives. Come on, let's get it. Holy cow. Ah. Get me out of here, now! Give me that staff. Okay, squares attack. Circle run. There's no lock on, by the way, guys. This is not a game that'll hold your hand like that. Oh my god, we can jump on it and ride it like that without grabbing it. So I've got my usual attack of hard attack, triangle, light attack, square. And I should be able to grab onto it, guys. I should be able to grab and climb them. Look at that fire. That looks really good. Okay, there we go. Let's get behind him. There we go. Get up on it. There we go. Get up on it. Now our stamina is depleting in battle. I'm fine with that. Get back up on there. Come here. I'm not doing a lot of damage, but I'm doing some. And I think when I'm on top of her, she can't really hurt me. Grab objects with R2 and throw them with R1. Approach an enemy and press R2 to grab. That's what we're doing. We're just gonna knife them for a while here. All right, so we can jump off and get higher up here. Come on. Oh no, I'm out of stamina. What, what's the circle mean? I'm inside this circle. Oh, you see that? You can throw a crate. Oh, let's throw a crate. I'm gonna throw this barrel at him. How do I do that? No. Oh. oh, I was just about to throw this barrel at her. Okay, so that was an interesting battle scene. I actually don't think that was as good as the first Hydra fight in the original Dragon's Dogma. So when we hold L3 in circle, we can dash. Why is it not dashing? There you go. Now it's dashing. And I am using stamina when I dash. Oh, we gotta jump? Whoa! No way. We're an Arisen on the run. No one could survive a fall from this height. Not even a pawn. Oh! That's sick. Don't just stand there, but shoot it down! Spinning away! Bring it down! Bring it down! Go now, lost son. Learn 
support you can of this world you must protect. This is just amazing, guys. Way to go, Capcom. Way to go. That was an amazing intro. I didn't think the boss fight with the Hydra right there, or the Medusa, whatever that is, was as good as the original boss fight intro in uh, Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen, where the Hydra comes and attacks the encampment. I think that was actually a better done fight. Everything else about this intro is outstanding. Look at this. I mean, beautiful. Way to go, guys. And the music. Holy cow. The score. I'll listen to this soundtrack by itself. I'm gonna get this OST today. Look at it. Here we go. So here's a Vermont. So in the first one, there was no... Uh, Right in the Griffin, outside of the area it was fighting and once it got so high and so far away it would just drop you off of it. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Hell of a shot. So this is going to be our home base area, obviously. Hideaki Itsuno. I'm really impressed by the sound engineering. And the mastering on it, how it blends into the gameplay. It's some of the best I've heard, guys, to be honest. Absolute master's class. So in the original one, you couldn't go in the water either, because of the brine. Are you all right? What happened here? Who's this dude? It kind of looks like trouble, to be honest. A griffin appears one moment and falls the next, and now you stand before me. Just ten. Was it you then, the one who was riding on its back? It is a wonder you survived. Accompany me to the stronghold. We'll treat your wounds and hear your story. All right. First taste of freedom trophy earned. <clears throat> Ultra main waterfall. So something just activated. I'm not sure what. First thing I do. Who knew there'd be a cavern around here? Uh huh. Uh huh. Priority quest set automatically, so that's cool. Your priority quest for your main quest automatically become your uh, priority quest. Okay, tutorial log. So if you want to check out a tutorial log, I keep saying that button, but that's not the right button. This is the button it's talking about. So view a detailed area of the map. I love this map. Look at this. Oh my god, this is huge. This is going to be huge, guys. So that's the capital, I bet. No, that's the excavation site we escaped from. We ended up all the way over here. Holy cow. Okay. Tales beginning. <clears throat> you gained your freedom and crossed the sea on Griffin Wing, only to have your pawn a companion swallowed up by the brine. Now alone, you must seek aid and the information. 
Justin will lead the way to the stronghold. Follow along. Now, the first thing I do <clears throat> whenever I play a game, a new game, is wherever they start me out and they face, I turn around and go the other way and see if there's anything there. Just something I've always done. Oh my god, that was sick. Just the way she slid down there, guys. I can tell the platformer is going to be dope in this game. So see, debilitations. Debilitations are negative status effects that range from inflicting damage at steady intervals to making the target vulnerable to a specific type of attack. <clears throat> they are not exclusive to the Arisen and their pawns, but can be inflicted upon their enemies as well, granting a fierce edge in battle if applied wisely. Consult each debilitation's entry for more information about its effects. So, the debilitation I just got right there, I think, is uh, I got wet. So, like, if I went to use my lantern, which I don't have, I, I can't, re I don't have right now, it wouldn't work because I'd be wet or a torch or something like that. Then I'd have to dry off first. Okay, <clears throat> let's follow him to wherever he wants to go. Ooh, treasure chest, first one. This is an obvious one that just is supposed to show you. Hey, here's a chest. This is what it looks like. Celebrious Brew. And we're going to check items out as we go here. We won't check every item out, but we'll check most of them out for you guys. A nourishing restorative common throughout the land. Consume it to recover a fair amount of health. Yeah. Okay, so healing potion. Nimble daggers used far and wide. Lighten. Wieldy, they fit comfortably in any palm. Yeah, okay. Miner's shirt, laborer's trousers. Very nice. I like this system. How everything's a little bit separated and easy to access. And it's all in one start menu. Before, <clears throat> it had two different menus. One was for quests, equipment, and the other one was for like all your items and key items and stuff like that. Here's all our stats. Oh cool, it shows you NPCs that you've interacted with. And so it has likes. <clears throat> so we must be able to give them items, interesting items, fancy items, interesting items, expensive items, and change our relationship with them. Okay, here's all of your tutorial stuff. Here's your adventure log, but this is sick. This is all your stats, player, pawns, NPCs. Oh, and you can have an affinity with these guys. Items and equipment, exploring the world. Nice. Okay, and then a file log with photo mode. That's sick. <laughs> Okay, pretty good, pretty standard. Now, withered branches. Now, everything in the first game had some kind of use and was somewhat useful. Gathering and crafting materials. Nice, 100 gold, too. Any other materials? So, fish. There's no fish. Fish were a big deal because they really healed stamina well in the first game. Also, if you kept a fish for too long or a piece of fruit or a piece of meat, it would rot on you. And I thought that was a really cool aspect. Really cool mechanic. So hopefully they bring that back. There's one move I want, guys, in this game. And I had it in the first one. Platforming's excellent. Look at that. I feel like the jump is responsive. I feel like I can land my character where I, shoot, where I want her to go. Batal. It's difficult to imagine. And where are you going? Up here. Oh, look at this platforming, guys. See, this is sick. This is one of the great aspects of Dragon's Dogma. This is one of the only RPGs where you're going to swing a sword and do this kind of stuff at the same time. I mean, this is crazy. Already, I can get up on this ledge and get all over this thing. There's going to be so much stuff that's just hidden across the land. I think you're going. You can't... I, I, I'm... I'm not running off, I'm right here. This is unbelievable how high up here I can get. I can go even higher, I bet. Don't fall off, don't fall off, don't fall off. Oh no. Okay, let's keep rolling here. I'm one of those guys. Oh, that was sick. 
I'm one of those players. I'm always looking for the next item around the next corner and up the next knoll. Sorry, friend. Where are you going? It's park cord. Force you to receive treatment, but I'd at least like a word. Well, I gotta blow my nose, guys. It's allergy season. It's starting to kick off here. Uh, I'm take Claren really quick too. Oh my god, this is so cool. Okay, back to Vormund. We got our first hundred gold, guys. First hundred gold. Force me to receive treatment. So it seems like he's not like the Overseer's pretty independent. Green War, so that is our healing item. Okay, guys, this is one of the big healing items in this game. There'll be different levels of Green War, I imagine. A common herb found throughout the land. Consume it to recover a small amount of health. Wow. Look at that. That's some of the most realistic water I've ever seen. This is beautiful. Wow. Hmm. <gasps> All right. Five goblins. Let's take yourself some more green wash. Nice. They already give you like the best move in the game right there. Right off the bat. Nice. So it doesn't lock on, <clears throat> but your attack does kind of auto lock. Okay. Uh, off items to be scavenged from the bodies of monsters and their ilk. Yep. If... Hunter gold. More green wash. So there's going to be quite a bit of depth to the combat, I can tell. There's some stuff going on there. It seems that you can stagger them and then use a power attack to really hurt them. Sheath or draw your weapons with L2. I love that about the first game. You can sheath your weapons. Oh, and it is making me a lot quicker. Where do you think you're going? <sighs> Sorry. Don't just run off now. Yeah, I know, but there's stuff out here we gotta find. Look at this, we found a bush. A bush with some berries. Cranberries. Never would have found it if we didn't look. Also, our encumbrance went up there, so now we're light instead of very light. And with just a few items. Wow. I love the way she automatically jumps off there, guys. That's not me hitting X. So, I'm sprinting towards the edge and it's automatically jumping off. So that was interesting combat. In the original one, it didn't auto-lock you on to the next enemy after you killed an enemy. So right there, it auto-locked me on. Going? I'm getting fish, because these are good for stamina. Oh, look at that. That's sick. A tide swimmer. Okay, I only grab one. The original one, you can grab quite a few. Now, I did get the... <clears throat> I did pre-order this. Oh god. When an enemy is flinching, you can pick them up with R2. Okay, guys with the shield, we gotta jump behind. Woo! Sick. I like that. That power attack right there. Can I break through his shield? No, but you can. He can get behind him and knock him down. Oh, I leveled up already. Sick. Now, there is a few moves in the first game. Oh, and it tells you all your stats. That's really cool. 
Well, there's all these side paths and stuff. Uh oh. Huh. Those don't look good. Those look bad. Those look real bad. Okay. I don't know what that did, but felt it was a little bit necessary. Where are you going? Exploring, homie. This is what I do. I look for stuff, then I pick it up. <sighs> grapes. I recognize grapes from the first one. So we have a lot of the same items, guys. <clears throat> Everything looks revamped. This is what I, one thing I was worried about and I was curious about. Was it going to be basically the same game with a new face on it? Or are there going to be some real differences? And they have made real differences. Real upgrades so far. Like already, if this is all that they've done as far as the mechanics of the game go, um, the fighting, oh gosh, the platforming. Oh my gosh, my health is almost gone too. So we need to quick, how can I quick key some items? Instead of having to do this. We'll figure that out. Where are you going? But if this is all that they've done as far as improvements go, it's already worth it, I would say. Okay. You, this guy's probably just like this mofo. Trying to get him to this place. It's like trying to get a drunk guy home. <clears throat> just can't keep him on track. Where do you think you're going? Can't just run off now. I was saying the same thing to you. I'm right here. Let's go. Come on, man. We want to keep collecting. I know it's taking up weight and everything, but we're going to need this stuff. Thief. So what does it say about the thief vocation in the tutorial book here? I do want to see what it says. Fundamentals of battle. <clears throat> Thieves wield their daggers with speed and ruthless efficiency, unleashing a flurry of deadly blows the one moment and stepping nimbly out of the enemy's reach in the next. Knowing when to strike and when to slip away is key to their strategy, as thieves little afford to be weighed down with heavy armor, leaving them vulnerable to attack. Dodging attack, press R1 to use swift step, a versatile maneuver that allows you to smoothly evade attacks. Yeah, that move is like one of the OP moves in the original game, and you had to like actually get it. It didn't just give it to you right away. Follow up attacks and pin down foes. Press triangle to use twin fangs. You can pin down foes that have been knocked off balance by continuing to hold triangle while activating and landing the attack. This gives you the opportunity to follow up with more attacks and deal massive damage. You will need to be wary of counterattacks, however, is you cannot move while pinning down a, a foe. So you can pin a foe and beat him up on the ground, but you gotta watch out for guys coming up on you. That's that's really cool. Where are you going? I'll not Jagged bone. Treatment, but I'd at least like a word. I like how that stuff disappears and breaks down as you find items. <laughs> Okay, we've made it to the fort, guys. Sorry it took so long, but I had to do a little bit of exploring. Who's this be? Welcome, Arisen. We pawns have long awaited your arrival. What is this? The pawns. They bend the knee to you so readily, but then... No. Surely you cannot be the Arisen. You seek the Riftstone, do you not? We can take you to it. Pray. Come this way. Facial animations are much improved, guys. Much improved. That was one of the... You stands a stone. Tis a gate by which we of the Pawn Legion may cross Ur into this world. Pray. Summon your pawn. Simply paint with your mind's eye the loyal attendant whom you would have serve you.
<laughs> Use existing character data to create your pawn. Yeah. Cool. So we want the fighter or we want the mage? Oh, it doesn't give me the mage? I had a mage one too. So usually the way I like to play, I like to have a mage and a fighter style guy. So we already have the thief who's like our physical damage DPS. So we'll get the mage. Muad'Dib. I always pick that name in one aspect or the other, either for my main character or my side character, because I love the Dune series. So, now I'm a Risen. I went from a lowly pawn in an encampment to being a Risen. This world, but myriad others with which we can connect. What was the difference? Because none of those pawns treated me special inside that excavation spot site. Not much happened besides us riding the Griffin and escaping. As a loyal pawn, my duty is to accompany you and use what I learn in these other realms to aid you on your journey. I shall be with you every step of the way. And I hope to put my knowledge and experiences to good use on your behalf. All right. Oh, me. A pawn summoning before my very eyes. You truly are the Arisen, then. Strange. I thought the Arisen was in the capital. Surely there's only meant to be one Arisen. Fine. This is all beyond my ken. The Watchhead would know what to do. I'm sure. Though, as luck would have it, he's away. I suppose we'll save any further questions till the Watchhead returns. You're free to do as you like afore then. <laughs> Look at the sword going through that guy's leg. So there is already a little bit of jank. A little bit of the facial motions and facial animations with the speech and dialogue aren't, like, perfect. But they're way better than it was. And that's not, like, the main aspect of this game. What? You've no memories, you say? No. Mayhap you could make for Melv, then. It was set upon by the dragon not long ago. The Arisen is said to bear some deep connection to the dragon. Should you be Arisen, mayhap you'll recall aught of import there. So originally, the reason we were connected in the original Dragon's Dogma and became Arisen, we were just a lowly fisherman, and the dragon attacked our village, ripped our heart out, and chose us. And that's what made us Arisen. And no, nothing's really happened, but all of a sudden we're Arisen. By touching the Riftstone, the Arisen can travel to the bridge atwixt worlds, which a great many pawns traverse as they journey beyond the Rift. This allows the Arisen to summon pawns who meet their specified preferences. These pawns will not level up while they are accompanying you. However, you may find that you need to hire a new support pawns at regular intervals. Cool. Hail, Arisen. Pray, ask all you wish to know. I shall answer. If it is within my power. Man, I've got so many questions for her, but we're going to stop this episode here, guys. And when we come back and continue... We'll continue the main story here. See what's going on and see what Luxa has to tell us here. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Lucky. The channel's game on. We'll just keep on gaming on. And we'll see you in the next episode of Dragon's Dogma 2. Peace, guys.